Okay, in this video tutorial, we're going to look at some of the Deformer uh, tools. So I've just made a simple polygon cube. What I have done with this is go into the channel box, into the poly cube, and just up to the subdivisions. If we don't have the subdivisions, we're trying to use deformers. Um, if you're just using six polygons, for example, it's the deformation isn't going to work correctly. Yet. You're not going to get the right results. The more polygons we have, the better the results we're going to have as well. So what I can do with this is select it. I'm in the animation module currently. Um, so let's just go into our create deformers and we'll look at the bend deformer. So in the nonlinear, we have the bend. Um, it doesn't seem to have done anything at first, but it has added this bend one handle on there. I can see in the channel box, and if we just put this into wireframe, you can see we have this green line down the center of our, our object, uh, which is the, the bend handle itself. If I just go into this in the channel box again and just go into the bend inputs, we have a couple of different parameters on this. Uh, the bend one handle shape, the one we've currently got selected at base level, only has the curvature in there. Uh, the bend actually has a, a lot more in there. So. Okay. Um, so if we up any of these, the curvature is the actual bend itself, so we can adjust that. Oh, for some reason this doesn't look like it's actually going on the object. Um, let's just reapply this. Nonlinear bend. And there we go. Okay. Um, I'm actually moving this by if I've got this highlighted here uh, with the middle button pressed down and just moving the mouse and the viewport, we can actually change this value. So there we've got the curvature actually changing. So if you just look at the wireframe again, you can actually see this bend handle. And the curvature of that is the curvature of the object itself. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of different things on this. Let's just increase this so you can see. The envelope uh, tones down the effect of the bend. So if we just bring this down, 0 means it has no effect. 1 means it has a full effect. Anywhere between that is kind of a partial effect. So you can see it's not quite over the actual arc of this. Take that back up to one. The low bound and high bound uh, is how this is working over the entire shape. So if we want this just to work uh, bent from the top, what we can do is with the low bound just set this to zero. You can see there it's ignoring the bend parameter underneath this value. So this is a value of zero uh, before we went down to minus 1 from that, by taking this low bound to 0, we're actually ignoring all of that information. We're just working on the top there. Okay. Uh, we could also take the high bound down as well. And there you can see, kind of taking off the effects. If both of these are at 0, nothing's going to happen. Uh, we can take that higher, but you can see it only affects it up to the top percentage of our actual model. So that's back at one. Okay. Um, so as well as this we can animate these parameters. So what we can do is um, just go to the first frame and as with anything over here we can click on it, right click, key selected. Go to round frame six. So that curvature in. Uh, let's just right click, key selected, and uh, score to frame say sixteen.
key selected. Let's just go up to around frame 24. Let's set this to zero. Uh, didn't key select that. Uh, let's just go into this. Zero. Key selected. And let's just look at this low bound on this. Let's just bring this down maybe a Do that. Okay, no, let's leave it at zero. Okay. But there we've got that uh, modifier actually affecting the object. Okay. Now, one thing with this is if we move the object, we grab this and move it out, we have a warping. As we're dragging it away, what it's going to do is stretch over to the original shape. Uh, and what we might want to do is actually move this object around and animate it. So what we have to do with this is we need to grab the, the handle. Um, that's the Ben 1 handle. We need to shift click on the object and then click on P to parent those together. So we have the bend happening, but now what I can do is actually click on the object and move this around as well. Okay, so you need to parent them together if you're going to work with that. Another example of one of the modifiers is we actually have a squash and stretch. Uh, so let's just do a new scene. Let's just get our sphere. freeze transformations on this, okay, and uh, again under our animation module, let's go and create deformers, non-linear, and let's do a squash. Uh, again we can go over in our channel box, we can go into the squash inputs and have a look at this, okay. So the first one we can look at is the actual squash amount. Um, so here we have this factor. If we just start playing with that, we can actually see we're getting the squash and stretch. Um, so unlike what we were doing before when we were trying to just scale this down, and then we had to scale out the X and the Z after flattening down the Y, um, this factor takes care of all of that. So it actually gives us our squash and stretch in there. Okay. Envelope is the same as the Ben modifier. Um, this is just taking the amount of the effect down. So leave that one. The max expand position, you can see it's just changing the maximum expansion depending on where this. Uh, so it's stretching out more at the top or the bottom depending on where that is. So you can actually change a bit of the stretch, uh, a bit of the way that the, the stretch works, yeah. So back to the center, 0.5, so that's even on both the top and bottom. Uh, we have the low bound and the high bound again, um, so as before if I set the low bound to zero, we're actually ignoring anything below this 0.5, it's not, not doing anything with that, not deforming at all. Um, we can do the same with the high bound and bring that down, um, so we're not affecting anything, and we can kind of take that up. Uh, we can stretch it above, but you can see up to its kind of maximum point of 1, it doesn't really change too much. So let's set back the high bound back to 1. We also have the start smoothness and end smoothness, which is how it blends between the top and bottom of this. So with the start smoothness, See what it's trying to do is blend out from the start point into this end point. So I'm going to smooth that curvature out, blend it out a bit. Uh, with the end smoothness, 
you can see it's actually working from this end point down to the start point. So it's smoothing it that way. Okay. Could obviously have both of those on and have a much smoother shape depending on the look that you're going for. Let's just take our low bound back down to minus one. Okay. Let's just take these both back down to zero. Uh, which is giving us pretty much our default. So again, we can animate this. Um, and I'm going to actually set set key on or, or auto key on. I'm just going to create a keyframe for this initially. Right click over this. It's key selected. Let's go down. It's a couple of frames in. Moving it up a couple of frames. A couple of frames in. Uh, we still have the problem that we were getting with the scale, in that this is all working from the center of this. And this is one of the problems with working this way. Uh, if we wanted to bounce this off another surface off the other side, we've actually got to play around with animating this pivot point around and moving the pivot point around so this actual bottom and top kind of go over here. And that can be a bit problematic. Uh, one of the ways we can get around this in, in a more simple animation like this is we could actually go in on this. Let's check where these keyframes are. So we have one on eight, 16 and 21. Uh, so on eight, let's just go in and grab the sphere. Let's just move this. Oops. Now we have a similar problem as to before with the bend. If we're moving this around, if we stretch it away from the deformer, we can actually see it takes that deformation off. Um, this could be animated. You can create quite a nice effect with this, but it's not what we want at this point. So what we need to do, is we just need to grab the handle, we need to shift click on the object and click P. Uh, let's go into our sphere now, it's frame 8. Let's just move this down. Uh, I've got our on. Let's just set an initial keyframe on this. Right click, key selected. Frame 8. Let's move this down now. Frame 16. Let's move this up. So I'm just constantly adjusting it. Frame 21. We can actually set it back on the ground. Um, so that's just a quick look at some of the deformers. Um, there are a couple more in there that you could play around with. Um, there's a twist. And we can actually add these on top of each other as well. So I can put a twist on top of this. Uh, probably we really won't show much on a sphere. Um, let's go into the twist inputs. I don't know if you can see there, the mesh is just putting this into wireframe. The mesh is actually twisting around on that. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, we can add these on top of each other so we can still go back to the handle uh, and we can still play around with the squash parameters as well. Okay. So that's just a quick look at uh, deformers and particularly non linear deformers and just a few of these different deformer types. Um, a lot of them are the same kind of properties, it's just playing around with them and seeing what they do. And of course all the help for this can be found in the Maya help document. And that's the end of this tutorial.